Stugatz here is your home an ADT home. If not, then listen up. You need to get to ADT to help protect against break-ins, fire, even carbon monoxide. And now for a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month for the most trusted name in home security. That's just a dollar a day. You spend way more than a buck on your morning coffee. ADT is the first security company to help you keep safe at home and when you're on the go with the new ADT Go app. ADT Go has some great features like a family locator, private messaging, automatic check-ins, and safe driving reports. It even includes an SOS button with 24-7 emergency response. And if you need more of a reason to buy, you get ADT Go with a purchase of any security system. Seriously, guys, it's a great deal. Protect yourself and your family. Do it right now. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. ADT, tested, trusted, proven, with 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply, excludes taxes and fees, applies to traditional services only, certain markets excluded, license available at ADT.com. Stu Gatz here. There's nothing small about your business, your passion, your hours, your reputation. It's all huge. Your partnerships, even bigger. With Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get the tech advice and one-on-one partnership to help your business grow. Because with reliable Dell PCs with Intel Core processors, you can focus on what matters most, getting business done. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with an advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. This is the best of the Dan Levator show with the Stugatz podcast. There are so many things I want to talk about right now after a three day weekend. Immigrants, a Johnny Depp article that was crazy. Jameis Winston. Gene Sterator is going to be CBS official. What? It's perfect, right? It's perfect. Gene, I would have wanted, if you told me that you could get Gene Steratore, that, that'd be the dream scenario, him or Hockley, right? Those are the two guys you want. And so now I want to get to that, but I can't because Mike is disoriented again because the butt of the Zlatan is on display for all, as is Greg Norman in all his glory. Your beloved Greg Norman, living, yes. living life better than any of us. Greg Norman's in the body issue. He's totally naked swinging a club, and also he's got a golf stick in his hand. <laughs> I mean, more man than all of us. And so you got that, and then you got the Zlatan, and he's got a butt tattoo. And this begins our World Cup coverage. A butt tattoo on each cheek. That has to be so painful. The fatty areas are the ones you want to avoid when getting a tattoo. Really? But it's not a fatty area for Zlatan. Not at all. Not at all. That was the most impressive thing to me from this whole body issue. And no, it's an issue. I, Greg Norman's was. Oh, uh, did you see Saquon Barkley? That's the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Did you see Saquon? Barkley? I didn't see Saquon Barkley, but I've seen you wandering all around the premises here. You've been shouting at Stugat, Stu, Stu. Look, you you pushed me out of the way to show Stugatz. What was it? Barkley's thigh. Uh, before we were obsessed with Barkley playing golf. Because it's it's shocking to see a Barkley actually be good at golf, but that's what Saquon is. <laughs> his thighs and how low he gets to the ground and just his drive. Off oh, the he tee. is so oh, nude, amazing. Is that the football he's carrying in that spot? We're still independently trying to verify Debatable. whether or not yeah. it is uh, the football he is holding. Mm-hmm. It took you did the same thing we did, right? Well, that everyone's going to do. Wow, he's nude, totally nude. It's the and body issue. Dan. What about those quads? I know, but we used to do just bikinis back in the day when Moral America would get outraged by these things. Bikini, women in bikini, shocking. You know, people would cancel their Sports Illustrated uh, subscriptions. And now I'm, I'm opening up the internet there, and that's Greg Norman porn is what that is. And it is beautiful. The bodies are all beautiful. Good God, they're beautiful. I like this. This is, um, Really, I, it's just getting the point across because Saquon Barkley, you know, he's entering a pro sport where a lot of people look like him. And that's amazing right, to me. But even by the standards of that, you'll always be amazed if you walk into an NFL locker room how fit those wide receivers are. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, Antonio Brown, shirtless, like the, the bodies are perfect because all they're doing, they're efficient, efficiency machines 
on on running, running precisely, efficiently. The body is just perfectly honed. And so they get these beautiful bodies that we celebrate by gawking at them. Greg Norman is the winner of this issue, by the way. Oh, my God. He looks fantastic. Oh, my God. Even more than Zlatan's butt tag? Yeah. Yeah. Put it on the pole, Guillermo. But hotter, you know, fan your face hotter. Greg Norman's nudity, Zlatan's butt tattoos. I got to tell you, like the sleeper here, the guy that surprised me the most was Carl Anthony Towns. Really? Yes. Looks really good. Oh, because you thought he was cat. Meow. Because you thought he was flabby? You thought Carl Anthony? Meow. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Wait a minute. Explain it to me. <laughs> what is it? Oh, what happened? Mike, oh, let's explain it. I can't make that sound, man. All like, right. You Mike, guys should you know that. It. Someone just thundered again. in no, and made I, that I, sound. I specifically yes. asked Billy to feed it because I can't roll my R's. Right. Well, <laughs> can, we do it? Can? Can, we, can we recreate it but again? I w- but I wouldn't have done what you did, which was just a... I had to give something. All right. All right. No, but that was not what that was not what you should have given me. That's oh, what you should have given me. I can't do that. Oh, come on. No, your teammates. Hold on. Stugatz. Stugatz. You could have waved them off. Stugatz. Yeah. Guillermo, listen to me. We were gawking at the body of Carl Anthony Towns. This is uncomfortable for a lot of different reasons. It's unlike any sports radio you've ever heard. But ESPN has put out the body issue. And now that we've gotten past our repressions and we can look at beautiful bodies and not get swallowed by political correctness, we can just gawk at bodies. And so we're gawking at bodies. And you were supposed to be trying to be sensual while gawking at a body legally while being paid for it. Is that hairball? Hairball. Um, good God, man. You ruined the whole thing. Because listen to the difference between what you did and what Billy did. Billy, do your sensual leering at Carl Anthony Towns your way. Stugatz, do your leering. You go ahead and recreate that because it's such a good show. It's such a meow. It is such a good joke they gave you. They tossed you this wonderful joke, Stugat. Let's do it again, Guillermo. For those of you who don't know, and I hate that we ruin these segments by just showing everybody the guts of the show. For the love of God. All right. Anyway, I, I think I'd refer, Guillermo. I think I'd prefer to do the show with you as the fake Stugatz because you get the show better. Let's do it again as you as fake Stugatz. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you as you as fake Stugatz. No, you stay out of it for a second. Oh, good, my mic right. is here. Uh, Stugatz, just stay out of it. Stay out of it. So warm. Stay out of it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't been watching on television, Stugatz has been impersonating a cat for about four minutes where he's licking his arms. And now he's, he's been brought a dish of milk that he is drinking with his face. Stugatz sounds like a horse. It really does. But let's let's try this again, Guillermo. Let's you pretend to do the show with me as we leer at the body issue. Are you ready? I think the surprise of the issue is Carl Anthony Towns. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot the meow. <laughs> Let's try it again. I think the surprise of the issue is Carl Anthony Towns. Cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. It was perfect joke telling. But <laughs> that's when it go that's when it falls apart. When you have to use Stugat to do it, that's where the whole thing falls apart. That's unbelievable. You had the punctuation and the dismount on that joke, and Stugatz, all he did was get in everybody's way. And what's funniest about that is he was saying right before that how we should be in the Radio Hall of Fame, and he was doing the math. Stugatz was doing the math on how many years he has to be doing this because he wants to start the campaign now for the Radio Hall of Fame. And here's the thing about his failures at every turn. He carried the show for Golik and Wingo all weekend. Golik and Wingo are the big dogs in sports radio. Stugatz went. Rough, rough, rough. Stugatz went there and carried them. Carried them. 
We're going to tell you about what Stugatz did this weekend carrying Golik and Wingo because it was a bleep show, right? Stugatz, you, like, you were the rock star, but it was a bit of a bleep show. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, right until we got to the course and then it turned into a lot of fun. But yes, right up until the point I teed off, it was a total bleep show. All right. Well, we'll get to that next because Golik <laughs> and Wingo are going to get a couple of gut punches here. Don Libertard. Are you not alarmed by how much Stugatz ate last night? Stugatz. I had no idea. He ate a lot. He was pretty gross when I left. I had no idea that he went on this like grazing. Well, here's the weird thing about Stugatz too, though. When Stugatz eats here, he never finishes anything. I know because I'm always cleaning it up. Uh, it's infuriating. After he's left. He leaves one wing. No, but well, no. Okay, that's... Someone wants it. I mean, I'm... just. Eat the wing. I thought Roy always ate the leftover wing. Roy always throws it away. Uh, all right, I'm a slob. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We've got a lot going on here. Uh, the World Cup being on while we're playing, while we're doing our show has been delightful. Like we've all been enjoying what's been happening here. And Stugats and Mike, for entertainment purposes only, have been making all sorts of prop bets. And Mike just fell on the floor as if he had been, you know, Tough one, as man. if the ceiling had fallen in on him because Suarez scored. Now I thought that would be a good moment. Suarez scoring. That's, that's uh, one of the big stars in the sports. One of the controversial guys. Mike doesn't like him very much. Unless you have Suarez not to score a goal today. Not great. Yeah. Not great. We had Cavani too. There was a conversation happening before a free kick that I think really cost us there, Stu Gatz. Okay. My buddy that I Venmo in, Del- uh, in Delaware is already taunting me. All right. We need Cavani to score, though, right? We need a Cavani goal now, and I don't know how many goals are going to be in this game. It's always a tricky spot the third game of the group phase because you don't know the the team's intentions. I mean, there's a game going on right now between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. The only thing that's on the line is pride. Uh, oh, how about how about that bet? Didn't you say uh, for entertainment purposes only that Panama would not score in the tournament, and then they're losing six nothing against England, and they put in a goal. I said if I could pick one team to go scoreless in the tournament, I think the best bet would be Panama, and things were looking great for that bet. However, what I didn't account for was England going up six zero mm-hmm. on them. They kind of got a little lazy. Well, but you did tell us your breakdown was correct that Panama is the worst team in the tournament. Like they've got the, the worst things are going to happen to Panama. It's 6 nil. That's a fun. <laughs> I don't know if they're the worst team in the tournament. I don't know if they're the worst team in the tournament because Saudi Arabia. Wow. Wow. Saudi Arabia is bad. And Panama just plays a style where they weren't likely to score in this tournament unless they went down by six. All right. But I want to get to that because I know you guys are excited about the World Cup and it has been fun to watch. But this Jameis Winston story, uh, it warrants your attention. Uh, this is. The wrong crime at the wrong time for the wrong criminal or alleged criminal when all of these things, you might give someone else the benefit of the doubt. Right. Jameis Winston comes into this incident with so much baggage in his past where many people still believe that he just got away with rape. What what swirls around Jameis Winston coming into the draft was an insanity before it's time, where you had all of the symbolisms of major college sports looking and a town looking like it was covering for a misbehaving athlete because he's the best freshman quarterback any of us have ever seen. And so Jameis Winston enters the league with the perception, fairly or unfairly, that he got away with raping somebody. The courts and everything made it go away. Football made it go away. The police made it go away. But it is, it is the center of... It is the it is at the center of everything swirling around America now as it comes to women and sexual crimes and football trying to be a leader on this and now you've got a quarterback who can't keep his hands to himself allegedly allegedly right oh, well I mean according to reports the NFL thinks that something happened in that car because it looks like he might be facing a three game suspension here and it happened a while ago. It happened a good amount of time, but it was BuzzFeed and it was an Uber driver and everything else. And so here's what Jonathan Vilma, and he's one of the, Jonathan Vilma has been one of the brightest voices through Bounty Gate and everything else. Jonathan Vilma has been one of the brightest voices to come through sports. Here's Jonathan Vilma talking about Jameis Winston. When you say he's got together, he's charismatic, he's all these things. Yeah, but, you know, if these allegations are true and and if he did those things, then there's really another side to him. You're talking about two different people or personalities and he knows how to put on one face 
for when it's time to be around football and yuck it up with the guys and and then he has the other per, the other side right and that's what scares me and that's what uh, is very alarming when you've got all of us being shocked by the undercovered case of Darren Sharper where an NFL football player was a serial rapist. And I'm not saying that that's what's happening with Jameis Winston. I'm saying he gets no benefit of the doubt on this incident because he's already got something like this in his past. One would assume while drinking, if you're reading the reports. Yeah, people because are he's having being, a tough time he, believing He's, he's him, being yes. put in an Uber by his right. friend, and then his friends are lying for him. And there's some of this. One of the friends who is covering for him, reportedly, one you saw this, right? He's Is he presently in prison? Uh, I think he is in prison on uh, on rape charges. He said that Jameis Winston was alone in that car for a period of time. That's what he is saying. I know, right? right, right with an in an outside the lines interview, is that yes. where that was? Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless, also, all- also the Uber driver, uh, according to reports here, have they? She has hired the same attorney that represented the victim in the Jameis Winston case at Florida State. Okay, so it's a giant mess, and it it bears looking at because everything that's happening in America, you know, that sports are always the reflection for the fun. The sports is always the funhouse mirror for society, and so well, Jameis Winston is the wrong name around the wrong crime at the wrong time for Jameis Winston, and give it given his past and what we know about him. But before we talk any more about that, we have to, I mean, I, Mike, I feel like I need to bury Golick and Wingo. They, they stole Stugatz from us over the weekend. Stugatz was running around here and he was, he was bothered because, uh, it was hard to get him easily on a flight to go, to go sell their show instead of our show. And Stugatz goes there and he gets buried by our listeners who are mad at him for going and supporting their show instead of doing our stuff and on top of that Stugatz feels like he was mistreated on the front end well I mean to be honest you know Golik and Wingo were fine and th- this was my idea it was a way for me to go play Pinehurst number two in North Carolina which I did play and I loved and we had a fantastic time and everyone involved with the not, entire promotion not, not a small thing not, not a small thing at all Are you kidding me I mean Dan's not going to go play Pinehurst number two with me so I figured I'd latch on to their show because they would do stuff like this because Wingo likes golf so. well before we get into a little more of Stugatz's grievances though Mike like I do that's that's not a small thing that one right there that you guys are pointing out like we need to address that for a second don't we <laughs> if you want also I mean. not a small thing was that, that he agreed to everything he's about to complain about well but the, the, what's not a small not thing is if I had told Stugatz five years ago, Stugatz, it's Pinehurst, it's Golik and Wingo, they need your help because you're a big star. Can you get in some private cars and some private planes and can you get to Pinehurst? That would be something that would have been impossible to imagine and beyond your wildest dreams. And so on your way there, the idea that you would be harumphing and complaining about it was kind of amazing to watch. If he told me years ago, I would have said, Wingo. I ain't got time to bleed. (laughs) It's true. It's weird. Mike and Mike should still be together. Wingo is like... The, the the stepdad like it, it should still be Mike and Mike and Wingo comes in and he looks like the actual stepdad who's trying to curry favor with us. But you're totally right. Five years ago, if I told you, Golik and Wingo, what do you who what? Why would anyone do that? <laughs> Greedy and Golik got announced to the Hall of Fame this morning. Why aren't they together? Their fifteenth Hall of Fame. Stugatz wants into that Hall of Fame, Mike. Uh, we're deserving, man. Stugatz thinks flatly that we should be in the Radio Hall of Fame already. We can pick now. up that campaign after we get Stugatz on the body issue. Yeah. Oh, that I'm is. in. Or me. Or me. Oh, maybe, yes. Maybe both yes. of us. Yes. Maybe both of us. <laughs> both of you. <laughs> maybe both of us. You want in? Well, if I do it, it helps him. It's uh, it, Instead of just hairy evolution... Like, You'll look so good next to me, man. No, I mean, I'm going to look terrible. No, but no, no, I'm telling you, I'm the one guy you can say. All like right, that. let's work toward that, <laughs> Mike. I want to work toward that. Me and Stugatz in the body issue. I mean, it has athletes in athletic positions doing what they do. It's going to be you right, guys hunched over <laughs> a microphone. All right, get on that right now, Allison. Opposer. Mike, get on that right now. Stugatz and Levitard body issue, 2019. Let's put it in our contract to coincide with the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Don Lebatard. Texture writes in Stugatz looks homeless today. If I saw him walking down Ocean Drive, I would give him five dollars. Stugatz. Thank you. 
This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So we got some issues around here because Mike is seeing some shadows and some signs on the LeBron stuff. This is that time of year. Mike's got links to links to links. So give me whatever you got here, Mike, in 30 seconds. Because in the middle of it, as you're doing this, and I'm fending off Wingo who's calling because Trey Wingo objects to some of the characterizations of Stugats on this weekend event. As I'm fending him off with one hand and Mike is talking LeBron, uh, I hear Stugatz mutter under his breath, we need to get someone to nominate us. <laughs> like, he doesn't care everything that's going around here. He's just thinking about getting into this Radio Hall of Fame discussion because now the star power has gone to his head, Mike. Like, he's going, it, Mike, he's he's the star of the ESPN radio lineup, and they need him, Golik and Wingo, as they transition a new marriage with Wingo as the stepdad. They they transitioned. They needed the star power of the Stugats at their event. I, you know, I got to be. It's a great Hall of Fame clash. You got Fred Sessa going in. You got Greeny going in. You got Golick going in, and the fabulous sports babe. And so, like, it appears that you need someone to nominate you to get into the Hall of Fame. And so, I'm hoping that you know maybe we'll find someone before the end of the segment. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on the poll, please, at Levitar Show. Do you remember the fabulous sports babe? Because he's absolutely right. She deserves. Yes. To be in the Sports Radio Hall of Fame. But what a pathetic Hall of Fame that is. Like I I feel like it's one of the worst I've ever heard. Not because not because the fabulous sports babe is in it, but because you can actually make the argument that we would be a regal beacon in the cruddiest Hall of Fame. It's not an argument. I mean. You could reasonably make an argument. Dan, I want in, man. I, right? I want in. I I, I'm never going to get to a Hall of Fame, anything else other than this. I want in. Okay, and we, yeah, look, no, we put in enough time. No, but I'm the telling thing you. that happens to you all the time, though, around here is you want something, then you get it, and then you get disgruntled. And that's what happened with this <laughs> Golic and Wingo thing. Because Mike keeps pointing it out. So, God, it's Pinehurst. It's the big radio show on ESPN Radio. You've made it. They need you. They're giving it, sending you first class tickets and and first class travel. Right. And you're the star of the show because we're the number one show in Rally. Is it Rally or Rally? It's I'm, Rally. I'm sorry, Rally, Rally. I deserve the fine and I'll take it. That's mm -hmm. my bad. I make that mistake all the time. I've mm. been corrected many times. One dollar for that. I mean, but do, tell me again what it because is. Because we're number one. Yeah, we're number one in Rally. So that's a dollar for you. I will tell you to all the other affiliates out there, that's how you embrace this show, our show, and Golik and Wingo, for that matter. Uh, I promise you, Trey or Mike would tell you the same thing. That station loves our show, and they love Golik and Wingo. And when the local lineup gets behind the national lineup, then you have yourself something, and that's what they have. Our shows both are like top three in that market but consistently. Our, but ours is bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by a lot. And so they needed you for this. And so what are your objections to how you were treated? Because, again, when you arrive somewhere, you often complain, what took me so long? Well, listen, the only problem I had was was really they wanted me. <clears throat> it was the planning, excuse me. That's a fine. Oh, let's see if I have any money. I think I left it all at uh, Pinehurst number two. Let me check today. Nope. I see it. I see what? a dollar. You I see, see That's three dollars. Well, I only have $1 on me. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, stuck so I, in between uh, a couple of cards I had because I was cutting some deals in Rally. An IOU. Got some endorsement deals. Uh, Mike, put another $2 in the IOU bucket. Huh. It's $3 for uh, the fines. If you don't know them, Stugets get fined when he coughs into the microphone or doesn't clear his... Uh, You're at 1045 just so you know, your IOU. I have an IOU here from Dan, $1, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Let's call it even. No, and that's not... What? I'll let you out of your thousand forty-five. You let me out of the uh, two dollars because no. I don't want to go down to the I, ATM. Right, let's for $2. continue this conversation, please. So the David. only the only issue that I had really was there was a a reception party. Now the players that I the, the listeners I was supposed to play with, listeners of our show, they did not show up. I was proud of them. The Stugats is strong in them. It's a good job out of them. Like last minute, didn't show up. No one came, and so so the guys who won I thought the that was appropriate. The <laughs> guy who won the the guys who won the contest uh, after uh, using our Twitter account, those guys didn't show up. They did not show up. One of the guys got sick, and none of them came. So I played with some of Golic and Wingo's listeners, some of their fans, people who won going through their portion of the promotion. The only problem I had, Dan, was there was a reception party. My listeners weren't there. This has nothing to do with Trey and has nothing to do with Golik, okay? My only issue is they wanted me to get off the bird, okay, get in a car, travel an hour and a half to crash this reception party for five minutes, 
then back another hour and a half because I had to wake up to do the show with Golik and Wingo the next morning. And then when that was done, go another hour and a half back to Pinehurst number two. And then when that was done, another hour and a half to go back to the airport. So they wanted me to be all in a car for class. All first class. Well, all privilege. It, it was all a car, privilege. It was a car service. It was not a limousine. I would have preferred that. Super stretch. But what I'm saying is that was six hours of driving to crash a party for five minutes, and no one was there for me. They were there for Golik and Wingo. Like, the party I was crashing was a Golik and Wingo party. Whose fault How is that? How did they crash the Who's party? Whose fault is that? Who's blamed somebody? Well, it's Wingo's fault. I mean, Wingo put the whole thing together, and you know, if he wants credit, then you gotta be put, you gotta be a part of everything. I don't care how much it tires stop, you and how much it burns you out. Now. You gotta be at the reception party, Who Trey. Got? What? Who got? Stop yeah. that now. Okay. Where did he come stop from? Stop that right now. What Where happened? did he come what from? Happened? What happened? First, first of all, I, I find it, I find it funny that the shortest guy wanted the stretch, right? I mean, <laughs> super stretch. Short, super stretch. Short, shortest guy time, baby. needed the super stretch. Yes. But I, time, I, baby. I will, def- I will I will defend you on this. Uh, you, sh- there's no way you should have driven, had to drive down to Piners, then come back up to do the show with us, and then drive down again. That makes no sense. Thank you. Thank you. So wait a minute. So Stugatz is right. You don't have any objections. You're just confirming that he was mistreated. Well, I think what Trey objects no, to. I, it, go, uh, go ahead, Trey. I'm sorry. No, no. Look, I, I think that the idea of drive flying in to Raleigh, driving down for the reception party. Thursday night, driving back to Raleigh Friday morning to do the show with us, and then driving back down after the show. It's the height of sports radio glory. You both sound like golf privilege snobs. No, like, a, what are you talking about? But originally, originally, we were told, hey, you're just going to drive to Pinehurst. You're going to wake up, but, do the but, show but, at Pinehurst. Do you guys, do you guys the next not morning? hear yourselves? Like, I, I, you're not listening oh. to yourselves. Oh, I, I listen to myself all the time, and I'm, I, I hate when I listen to myself. But I, I, I will say that on that, on that, on that level, he's right. And everything else, he has nothing to complain about. But on that level, yes. I think that's a fair. That's a fair. Hey, he agrees with me. Listen, okay. look, look where we arrived. Two menches just no, cutting up, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Two menches. Wait a minute. Tray. Wingo. Oh, I love Wingo. Wingo. Why do you need Stugat so much? To why are you siding with him? You were supposed to come in here and brawl with him because he was saying well, things no. that were wrong. But you laid over on your I, back and I, you let him rub your I, belly. I, I think what Trey. Trey, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what Trey oh. objects to is I am taking full uh, credit for this uh, event, uh, and no, really no, it's Wingo who put it together. You know what? Get get how out 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 with how. Hold on, how how before you get. Out of here! Hold Can you on. get us into the Hall of Fame? Hold on. <laughs> no, my I, I, my my objection is that Stugatz thinks this whole thing was his idea. If yeah. you play the audio clip, he says we should play golf, and I say, yeah, we'll call it a corporate retreat. Enough, enough, so, the, enough. Uh, we'll we'll pick it back up with firm. you another time, Hal. Right. We'll, then we'll continue this right. feud another day. You can't believe there is no feud. There, there is, no there is a feud, cool. my dad. fellow mensch. There is a feud, stepdad. There is a feud. We all remember the previous marriage, and we loved it better. Wow. I'm sorry that came out like more that. More money, Man, more promises. Sorry. I, mean, I got another one scheduled, Pinehurst number two, coming up in a couple of months. You in? You, you want to come with us? sound so gross. I would like you to come with us on this one. You Can you do it? So, do you guys listen to yourselves as you're talking about Pinehurst? Mike, what, what are you looking at? What happened in soccer here? Saudi Arabia misses a PK. They remain scoreless in the tournament. Russia down to 10 men uh, shortly after uh, conceding a second goal. Not a goal by Cavani, who got. Don't forget. You can hear more of my son's Dan and his two weekdays starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. See how quick he is at slithering around I'm things? Good. Like, yeah, you are good. You're, you yeah. are a master liar. Stugatz. Like, you are, you are a genius liar. You are like uh, the Einstein of liars. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN radio. I'll forever be able to recognize the Zlatan because of pictures of his butt, and I'll forever be able to recognize the great white shark, greater than I even imagined. Also whiter. 
<laughs> Every bit the shark. The body issue is a delight. It left us all longing. Uh, Mike, but I need your help here. When I was I was joking when I shouted at you, don't talk politics. But I legitimately don't know what the rules are anymore about uh, here at ESPN right now with new leadership. I don't know what the rules are on how can I attack what is happening with immigrants because i had two reactions this weekend right because you you know my sensibilities to god's i i uh, i'm an exile i value freedom like some of the things that are happening right now on your television screens they're it's they're they're just they're horrifying in ways that make people react but even from within that and even as a child of exiles who values freedom above all else and sees stuff happening in america that doesn't look very american uh, doesn't doesn't feel good uh, eliminating the politics from it. It's just enormously personal to me. Like I don't if two laws go different, I grow up in a different regime and I never get to this country and I never get to build anything because my family made all the sacrifices to get me to the freedom. And the ocean is filled with people here, filled, literally filled with people who've literally thrown their lives to the wind in order to get to this country. And if not by the grace of God, there go I, because the rules were just different for Cuba. And so you're watching this on your televisions, and it doesn't have anything to do with sports. Nothing. Zero. Like, I can't tie it to sports using Steve Kerr as a meat shield. I can't tie it to Greg Popovich. There's nowhere I can tie it, but it's intensely personal to me what is happening right now in this country. But I don't know how to discuss it on our airwaves. And even within that, though, Mike... What I was thinking to myself, as Trump's people get chased out of restaurants, I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't seem very America to do that to people, to deny them service. And then some of the details start filtering in because I'm like, no, that doesn't seem fair. Don't do that. Don't. That's not our country. You could disagree with people, but don't deny them service. Let's not do that. Right. It's very weird to ask me how I talk about it and then go for four minutes before I get a chance to answer. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I ruined it. Just don't ask me. Okay. All right. So now I'm okay. So tell me. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you started doing things that I wouldn't do. Not at all political. You can tackle. This is actually something that you can tackle from a humanitarian perspective. Um, if you just try to avoid any sort of politics or political ties or policies when it comes to this, I think you're fine because. I've seen people make statements just from the humanitarian prism. Also, but how about the funny filter, prism? The I mean, funny prism is always no. Well, but this is where always. I was headed. But this is where I was headed. Uh, funny is uh, uh, you know it, it's a arbitrary, subjective thing. Um, what but I'm Hispanic. Funny is. The idea of a Mexican restaurant being kicked out. Wait a minute. They, it was being kicked out of a Mexican restaurant. Like I was trying to find the funny in it. That's where I was headed conversationally. I'm sorry I got sidetracked, but I was trying to get to the parts where I'm like. Man, you shouldn't deny them service. Oh, but that's pretty funny if it's an actual Mexican restaurant. Uh, also, uh, something that you uh, mentioned in the four minutes when trying to figure out how to talk about it, you sort of gloss over, hey, I can't really tie this to sports. Well, that's kind of a big one. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But what am I supposed to do when it's that personal is what I'm asking you. Because while I'm tripping around on the stage genuinely and sincerely, I'm tripping around on the stage. I was not doing that to be... I was not doing that to be somebody who's butting up against management in any way or doing what I want to do just because I want to do it. I'm doing that because I'm telling you what my honest feelings are about this as someone whose family came here as freedom fighters. The idea of freedom really matters to me. And so I won't talk about the details of this anymore, but I'm asking you genuinely. I'm asking you on air. I should have asked you off air. That part's obvious now. That would have been nice. That part's obvious now. I should have asked you off air. But I am asking you sincerely, what am I supposed to do here? At, given that it's that personal, just back away from the mic and eat it? Well, the the personal stuff, so you can certainly share your personal story and your personal experience with that. Lord knows a lot of people in our home, I share my family. Uh, my dad left Cuba when he was a small child. I know Billy has family. You can share your personal experiences. Um, I'm, and keep in mind, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling, answering your questions as to how you can approach right, but, things. Okay, well, because that's all. All I want the people to understand is why it's personal to me. We don't have to get into Rabel's. You know, I'm not interested in the politics of this. I'm only interested in the parts that affect me personally, which is my my mother. You know, leaving her parents at 
14 years old, not knowing if they'd ever see each other again, thinking maybe they'd see each other again in six months, and then a decade goes by before freedom arrives. We see it throughout Cuban baseball. Cuban baseball, guys, I, I mean, I've written those stories going to the islands with El Duque and LeVon Hernandez when they're hiding on an island trying to get over to this country and they can't talk about certain things because they're afraid of reprisal back home, but they're trying to get to this country by any means necessary. So politics aside, this had to be obviously a very emotional weekend for you. Just well, watching just, some of this play it, out it, on it, TV. Well, yeah. so, and so I'm, I'm just personalizing it. I'm just I'm watching this stuff and I'm like, man, but like... It doesn't have to move you politically. The image of, you know families being separated and ch just children crying can move anybody whether they have kids or not and that that's an emotional human response and not doesn't have to necessarily be a political one um and so that's what's happening here because i remember my mother being in an airplane uh you know she had to leave me alone for a while and like she couldn't uh yeah she wanted to jump from the airplane and like just some of these things that happen when right it was probably you know turning some stuff inside of you um, and rehashing some of those memories. And so I'm, um, but I'm legitimately asking you guys because we are among the few stories at ESPN that can actually tell this story, the specifics of, of, of this. Like there aren't very many voices at ESPN who are given the platform. You know, there, there's right. Am I, am I misreading something when I say there's, there's just a handful? This is not even a race story. It's not a politics story. We're talking about immigrants and exiles and how personal it is to me and maybe like what five or six people at the company who understand the specifics of that, of, of immigrants trying to flee something or in the case of my parents, exile. They came from money. They had money. They were leaving their money and their family behind to get to the country, the freedoms that I now have here, that we now have here. These freedoms are not possible. They're not possible if Cuban government and the American government didn't merge together to make that so with a couple of rules. If not, thereby, for the grace of God, go I, is what I'm telling you, trying to get into this country, or my parents trying to get into this country. Um. And so when I, yeah, so like I'm, I'm legitimately sort of, I, I want people to understand that because I don't think that runs through the American prism. Because if you grow up in this country, sometimes you don't think, you don't have to think about those things. Right. And, and keep in mind that your story is not necessarily an apples and, to apples comparison of what's going on right now, mm -hmm. but it can, it's close I know, enough that it can I know, stir that's, you that's emotionally. Correct. Correct. See, I'm not, that's the thing. I'm not interested in any way in the politics of this. I'm just feeling the, oh, man, no matter which side you're on on this, no matter how you whatever you think, they're like, oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't look good. That doesn't feel good is what swept over me this weekend. And it's not taking a side in the fight. It's the personal nature of what I'm talking about, which, Mike, there I'm, is there enough? I mean, Los Angeles, San Diego, Miami, like. What are the what are the cities that know this? El Paso, there's you know, Texas certainly large parts of Texas. There aren't many, like there aren't many. This is an intensely uh, Arizona, mm -hmm. New Mexico, that area of the country. All right. Well, we're working this out on air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, should we go to something else? Do you guys have something else you want to go to? I think LeBron may have bought a new house in Miami. You what? See his look, at his, look at his Instagram here. story. Ooh. It is says fruits of my labor, and it looks like he's looking at the ocean, and I think it's too early for it to be that bright in L.A., and there's definitely an ocean there, and I'm telling you, he may or may, he could be renting the place, but he seems to really be enjoying Mike, the ocean. Mike, Mike, you know what that means. Mike, wait a minute. Let's not, let's, flat. Mike, we don't That's know. Mike, Mike, hold, we, up, hold Mike, up, hold no, up. It's don't too hold early on. in the West no, Coast Mike, for that. let's go. I'm Mike, right listen, now. why are you waiting, uh, Mike? Why are you trying to confirm things? It doesn't matter whether you confirm them or not, Mike. Okay, all right. Um, emoji count. I got a green apple, no. a red yeah. apple, no. yeah. two no. oranges. Mike. Orange, Mike. Stay oranges. Oh, orange, stay oranges. Mike. oranges. Mike, he's coming to Miami. I got a strawberry. Is there a grapefruit? Is there a grapefruit? There's a banana. But not Where's the music? Where's the pit bull? He's coming to Miami. He is. He's coming to Miami. He is. It's done. He is. It's a banana boat. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm gonna give it to you. Ah. Yeah. Ah.
more money, more problems. Good job, Billy. I'm glad that happened. Which part? LeBron Park, coming back to Miami. Don Libertard. Give me the musician that John Oates right now would pay top dollar because he has to see that musician. Chuck Berry. Stugatz. Okay, yeah, well, we can't do that. This is the Don Libertard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Libertard Show at Stugatz790. Dan, it is time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by That's Straight Talk. Ooh, no, fine, way. Fine, 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 fine. no way. No way. Yeah, I fought through it. No, yeah, dollar. but you cleared a cough into the how microphone. How many cigarettes did you smoke with Hal and, uh, and Golick? Like, how much drinking were you doing? Because you're coming in here pretty polluted. You're you're foul, and you now owe, uh, well, what are you claiming here? You owe... I owe three dollars. You owe a thousand forty-two. Uh, we can make it all go away if you uh, if you wash mine away. I'll wash yours away. How's that sound? No, I don't owe what you say. I owe. You owe a thousand forty-two. Billy has the IOU. And to answer your question, uh, not many. I had a ton of drinks, and I had about three stogies and a couple of cigs. I was on the golf course, man. When in Rome, Guillermo, yeah, put it on the poll at Lebetard Show, calling them cigs. Jerk or no jerk. Anyway, it's time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Sigs? I don't know. Mike, how do you feel emotionally about the fact that ESPN lost the uh, the raging war to get Gene Steratore as the official's expert? You love him. You hate him. You, I love to hate him. Yeah, you go you go all over the place. Your relationship with Gene Steratore is very uh, complicated. How would you explain it to the people? He's he is uh, he's got to be the most confident ref in the history of NFL refereeing. He he gives it off oozing with every like Mike Carey didn't give that off. Very few give. Ed Hockley kind of does, but not really. It's just that he lifts weights and <laughs> and and. But, there, there isn't a referee that gives off confidence more, and that's saying a lot. Like considering Ed Hockley's body, but there isn't a referee that gives off more self confidence and bordering on cockiness. And you know what? Let's eliminate bordering. How there is isn't it a ref possible? that displays How cockiness. How is it possible that Gene Steratore, the NFL referee, has conveyed to all of us with very few words that, oh, yeah, you love you some Gene Steratore? You are somebody, you, yeah, big boy, you love it. Like, you get up in the morning, you look in that mirror, and you're like, yeah, uh, Gene's going to go out there, and he's going to referee those guys today. My relationship, I'm looking forward to my relationship with Gene Serator improving now that he's not ruining the games that I might have action on. Right. But I miss Mike Carey. For entertainment man. purposes yeah. only. We all miss Mike Carey. I Put do. it on the poll, it's Guillermo. A bad mistake. At Levitard Show. Mike Carey was one of the original pioneers, and this is the uh, fate of leadership often. It's the fate of pioneering this way. You get swallowed as a martyr. Mike Carey was one of the first, and now, uh, and he was terrible, truly terrible, always wrong. Yeah, but he had Mike Pereira. Like he had Pereira, I think, was I the first, and Carey had a right. couple of years of Pereira, Carey, and then he Carey, came in and Carey, shot Carey got the first chance. We need to examine this. Guillermo put it on the poll. Do you miss Mike Carey? If you don't know what we're talking about, Mike Pereira is a star. He breaks onto the scene. He explains the rules to us. Think about how stupid this is. You're watching football, and you need the rules explained to you. Mike Pereira explained them. Boom, he's a star. Everybody wants one of those. CBS says, I know, Mike Carey. Everything he says is wrong. Mike Carey gets everything wrong. He never has anything right. Mike Carey leaves in disgrace, and now there's a bidding war for these referees as the football money pours down from the sky and stares towards like, nope, I don't need to be cocky here. Start time, baby. <laughs> Send me the home of Magnum B.I. and Murphy Brown. I'm going to CBS. Who wants the Sterator? <laughs> That's why there's a rash of these um, NFL officials retiring early. Serator, he's going to be the best at it. There's correct? more money in it for Mike, them. I he's going to become a, a legitimate. Dan, I'm telling you, it's going to be very hard. I'm not saying he's not going to be Mike, good, and he might be great. Mike, but to surpass Mike, Pereira? Mike Pereira is classy and smooth, but he's also the old incarnation. He's the old guard. Mike Carey came in and... It was Mike Carey. It was the Mike Carey experience. Which I miss. Yes. Uh, I miss because we it was so do. wrong and it was yes. funny. It was comedy in the middle of your telecast. But here comes the new guy. Here comes the big boy. Sterator is here to show everyone how this is done. And I believe Mike Pereira is a bit too polite for Sterator's game. It's Sterator's game now, baby. And he's taking it to the network of Murphy Brown and Magnum P.I. They're, that's gonna that's gonna make CBS the football giant Moonves has always imagined. Mike, 
It's going to happen here. He got Romo because he's like, I got him young. I know you guys think that the whole network is old and the whole network feels like 60 minutes. And, and was the final piece. Serator's the piece that brings him back. The whole approach is a bit tired, right? You're trying to get these officials to be likable. Jeff Triplett uh, was just hired. Mike Pereira, super likable guy. Officials aren't liked. They're hated. You need a face for that hatred. Well, we hired Javi. Isn't that why we hired Javi? Face for hatred. Steve, yes. Steve Javi's the most look at me referee in the history of look at me referee. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no. Perhaps whoa. you forgot about him because he recently retired. Oh my Joey Crawford. Thank yeah, you. Yes. Respect the man's name. Now wait a minute. Oh, no. I refuse to believe that Joey Crawford, who had his own arrogance and did indeed look like a cartoon turtle without its shell. That Joey Crawford was suspended for a year because he was the look at me referee. But Javi threw out a mascot, Mike, or maybe multiple mascots. I think Javi is someone who is a serial mascot ejector. Joey Crawford threw out Tim Duncan. I, okay, well, there laughing. we are. Okay, well, now we've got a, now we got a discussion, don't we? What do I have to make it on the crime list for look at me referee uh, Javi on throwing out mascots? Where do I have to be? on the number for it to match your criminal activity. The gif of Joey Crawford calling a blocking foul. You know it's the one I'm one. talking yeah, about in Los Angeles. One. Yes, it's a great one. All right, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Jaffe has thrown out multiple mascots. <laughs> Don Libertard. Bleep yeah! Bleep yeah! Stugats. Bleep no! Bleep no! <laughs> this is the Don Libertard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Want to go to the 2018 ESPYs? How about going as the guest of this year's host, Danica Patrick? Make a donation to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, and you can win a VIP ESPYs trip and the chance to meet Danica Patrick at a rehearsal before the show. Go to ebay.com slash ESPN to donate for your chance to win. For official rules, go to ebay.com slash ESPN. Here's your Sports Center update. Borna Korik defeated Roger Federer for the Gary Weber Open title. Federer's 20th match, uh, 20 match winning streak on grass is now over. Yankees catcher Gary Sanchez is likely to go to the DL with a groin injury. And finally, Bridget, Brigitte Nielsen welcomed a newborn daughter last week at the age of 54. Um, wait a minute. 54. The, the, the one from the Rocky movie? Yep. She dated Flavor Flav seriously for a while, right? Yeah, that Brigitte Nelson. Mm-hmm. Was she Drago's girlfriend in Rocky yep. Four? Yeah. Yeah. Was that one of old. the strangest uh, man-woman connections you've ever seen? Those two. Yeah. Brigitte Nielsen and Flavor Flav. <laughs> it's, it's certainly in the top five. <laughs> I mean, it has to be in the top five. What else is in the top five? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Stu God. It's okay. I just had a sentence to go. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. JJ Walker and Ann Coulter. Okay, but are we going to do this? Is it always going to be interracial? <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. JJ Walker. Am I doing and, something? Well, but I, Whoopi Goldberg, Ted Danson. Hayden Panettiere and the Klitschko guy. Huh? There we go. There we go. Thank you. One's tall. Uh, right. One wasn't. That's right. That's part of the issue here. What is Darren Ravel tweeting here before we get to Stugatz's weekend observations? They're coming up at noon. At noon today, Stugatz's weekend observations, noon Eastern. It's uh, one of the most popular things we do around here. So 30 minutes from now, Stugatz's weekend observations. What's Ravel tweeting? Well, right now in the World Cup, we're entering the, the final match day of the of the group stage. This is where two teams from the group get eliminated and two go on to the knockout round. And these games go uh, in the group happen simultaneously. That way you can't have a result in hand and a team can just sort of be really lazy out there and uh, not give you a just and fair result. Okay, so Iran... It's playing Portugal today. By the way, all the afternoon uh, group matches seem to be the exciting ones. The morning ones are not so great. Portugal, what does Portugal need? They're, Portugal, they're advancing. They're, right? uh, well, their place is not set. They need the, to win this game against Iran because Iran uh, won on a stunning own goal from Morocco that essentially knocked out our beloved Moroccan manager. That Herb was heartbreaking. Arnaud. It was heartbreaking. Like I've never fallen so hard so fast for somebody. Like that was. Yeah, I met him and we had a tour de affair and then he was gone. 
And Morocco played really well after that uh, against Portugal, only lost 1-0. Iran beat uh, Morocco and played Spain really well. It wasn't great to watch because there were 10 people in the box. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing where Mike is taking us right now. I'm sorry. All right, so I got that out of the way. It's amazing. So Iran's still alive despite losing... uh, to Spain. This is an important game. Iran versus uh, Portugal. Should we kick him out? Do you want to kick him out of the room? Like, I thought we wanted soccer coverage. No, this is where I'm going right here. <laughs> so, Iran needs to win this game. Usually, the old thing, sometimes when the Patriots are, are playing in Pittsburgh or the Steelers are in, uh, near Foxborough, they'll, there'll be a fire alarm pulled at the hotel or you'll call the opposing team. Well, all the Iranian fans just went to the hotel that the Portuguese are staying at, and they're outside having a huge party at night. <laughs> and there's a great video of this. Darren Ravel posted it on his Twitter account, and at one point towards the end of the video, you the camera pans <laughs> up, and you see the beautiful silhouette of Cristiano Ronaldo. It's amazing. Shirtless, I paused of course, it there. Yeah, I paused it there. Shushing the crowd, <laughs> making pantomiming that he has to go to sleep because there's a game tomorrow. <laughs> so they just were partying all night, preventing the Portuguese players from getting the rest that they need. I, but this video, who who sent this video out and how popular is this video? Because that must be the full drinking in of the most beautiful, least humble athlete in the history of sports. Like Ronaldo, who Mike Ryan has accused of Botox usage. Ronaldo shirtless emerging from uh, his hotel room asking to sleep. <laughs> and there are throngs below drinking and just trying to upset throngs of Iranians. Celebrating, yes. drumming, singing aloud, yes, preventing the Portuguese players from but getting. He a nice must be so singing. torn because he loves a good party, right? He seemed to be in a playful mood while asking and begging the Iranians to please. That would keep be it pretty down. terrible, though. Can't you get some earplugs? Like, what's the story, Ronaldo? You don't have enough money to get some earplugs. It's like trying to sleep at the Cleveland. Tour. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's trying to do. The Mexican team actually went down and asked their own supporters to please keep it down so that they could sleep and get ready for the game the next day. They said, thank you for your support, but please, guys, keep it down. We need to rest for the game tomorrow. Mike, history of arrogance. Is Ronaldo going to be unseated by Sterator? Man, you you guys are disrespecting the Zlatan, the butt-tatted Zlatan in the history of what arrogance. What is the butt-tatted? What, the Zlatan is in the body issue. He uh, Greg Norman stole the issue, but the Zlatan thundered from behind, literally. Yeah, so we all know about the fullback uh, lion tattoo on Zlatan, right? He is the lion. He refers to himself uh, as a lion. He has this really gnarly back tattoo. He's one of the more tatted up athletes. What we didn't know was what lied below the lower back, and that perfect was perfect glutes, uh, amazing glutes that are tatted up, perfect. tatted perfect. up with some sort of design. Um, that looked really tedious because it's not one massive design. These are little thing, little pieces that uh, uh, combine to make one larger piece of artwork on both cheeks. It's really a it's magnificent It's beautiful. Thing. It's a piece of art. It, it, the Zlatan can say with a straight face and with no sarcasm, my rear end is a masterpiece. It is a work of art. <laughs> And no one could dispute it. The Zlatan would be correct, as the Zlatan often and always is. Yeah. yeah, uh, Proven, by the way. The only person to never be wrong. Uh, other than Sterator. Yeah, Sterator's never been wrong. Guillermo, put it on the poll. In arguments as, at home, has Sterator ever been wrong? What are you looking at, Mike? What oh, are you at rooting home? for? No, I, I don't care, Dan. Mike, I don't care who you is, are. What are the bets you two have? I'm sorry. We have we Cavani have to score. I'm distracted today. We have Cavani to score, and he just blew an opportunity. Yeah. Bad pass from yeah. Suarez. So you're saying he, Sterator even wins the arguments at home? Because I'm telling you, that's the one place he does not win the arguments. I don't, think I don't that, care who you are. I don't think Sterator ever says, yeah, I was wrong on that one. My bet. I don't think Sterator has ever said my bet. I can't wait till he swaggers into that referee's booth and just takes over the joint. <laughs> Can't wait for him to start ripping other officials. Oh yeah, well he's going to be a loose cannon. You, you, he's his arrogance is going to make all the other guys who are protecting each other being as nice as Mike P- Pereira is all the time. I hope they always go to him in a stand up. It would be a real mistake to have that dude sitting sitting down because he needs to saunter over to wherever he's going Mike, on camera. The refs. This is a fairly fascinating thing to see happen in sports in real time. The refs have gotten a taste of the cotton candy. The refs want in on the game. They want you to listen to them 
break down the game in the telecast. They want you to fight over them as analysts, experts in a sport where we don't know what the hell a catch is. We're watching the game, and then we'll go to Mike Carey. He'll get it wrong. We'll go to Sterator. He'll get it wrong, but then we'll never admit it. Baron Davis and Laura Dern. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it with just interracial marriages. I don't remember. We had Klitschko. We're safe. Just keep mentioning Klitschko. Yeah. Well, which put those all up on the poll, Guillermo. All those unusual marriages. How many others are there? Julia Roberts, Lyle Lovett. Mm. We got two now. Yeah. That's a good one. How about uh, the lead singer from The Cars? Rick Ocasek? That's not a fine if he's asking a question, by the way. <laughs> Just, I know not. a lot of a lot of you. <laughs> the loophole, saw, though. At the you. very least, a loophole. The lead singer of the Cards is one of the uh, hardest to look at people in the history of entertainment. I think that was a source. Of, the same thing you guys are doing to Julie Roberts and Lyle Lovett, you could do in this circumstance. Tell me I'm wrong, Mike. Wow, Rick Ocasek still rocking the jet black hair, thinking we don't know. <laughs> Cash Cashmore of the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Next, you're holding up the line, ma'am. What did you say? You're next in line for the water slide, ma'am. Feet forward and enjoy the ride. Okay, dearie, this does look fun. We all, you melted me. I've melted. The Wicked Witch of the West on a water slide? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. See what you've done! Oh! GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. Deion Sanders is the best to ever do it. I think uh, we've talked to you before briefly. I don't know how. At, at one point you had gone public saying you had a sex addiction, right? No. Okay. No. Stugats. Oh, that wasn't me. That was another guy. I ain't no sex addiction. I love sex just as much you love sex. You know addiction. <laughs> you become a sexaholic or something. You want to, you try to get a confession out of me. You know, I feel like I've talked to you about that before. No, that wasn't me. That was the other Sanders. That wasn't me. That wasn't, that wasn't me. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show will be via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The LA Kings signed Ilya Kovalchuk to a three year contract. I hope I said that right. Wow, wow for real? Yeah, three year deal. Kovalchuk is back? Yep. Wow. Mm hmm. The owners of the Chicago Cubs are interested in taking over Serie A soccer club AC Milan. Syria. Syria ah, Syria ah, okay. Syria ah. So it's two A's. Syria ah ah. It's not like you got to stutter. Syria. I don't ah. think so. I mean, it's spelled here S E R I E. Syria. I, it's kind of like Syria. the country. Just Syria. Syria. Syria ah. Soccer club AC Milan. What's this two A stuff he's talking about? And finally, rapper Action Bronson. Says he auditioned for Martin Scorsese's upcoming film, The Irishman, but says he, quote, totally bleeping bombed. It was terrible. I'm not good at reading off paper. First of all, I couldn't see the bleeping words on the paper because I need glasses, which is crazy in itself, because I thought I had fight, uh, fighter pilot vision. I've been saying this for the past 10 years, and I'm bleeping lying to everyone, Bronson said. Apparently, Scorsese is a big action Bronson fan. That can't be right. Because the rapper overcame the terrible audition and got to share a couple of scenes with Robert De Niro in the film. That can't be right. What do you mean? Guillermo, put on the poll, is Scorsese an Action Bronson fan? <laughs> it just can't be right, is what I said to you. Fighter pilot vision, though, is funny, right? Yes. That's now, you, the, fight, well, you fight the vision forever as you get old, I'm, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure that fighter pilot vision is the only reason you read all those words. <laughs> that phrase, to hear Action Bronson quoted as saying, fighter pilot vision. With GNC, auto-deliver and save, don't worry about missing a daily dose of your favorite products. Set up your free subscription to enjoy free shipping and 10% off your order. Quality ship, wellness delivered. Visit GNC.com or a store near you to learn more. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I want to get to this Kawhi Leonard story. I want to get to the bottom of why Nate Robinson stole Rashard McCants' mask. 
It had hair on it. It looked like a mask. It looked like a Halloween mask. It was a Joker mask. Yes. Well, okay, but why? Why does he have a Joker mask? Is he like a professional wrestler that way? All right, we'll get to it later. Time now for Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations brought to you by Vivid Seats. When's the last time you were at the game or a concert? Go to VividSeats.com slash ESPN today for your exclusive discount offer. Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner of ESPN. Dan, things are starting to get a little messy for Argentina in the World Cup. Speaking of cups, Dwight Howard didn't even have enough time to enjoy a cup of coffee with the Nets. Just a shot. Of espresso, <laughs> Dwight Howard, Golden State Warriors, collision course. And they'll win a title. They'll win four titles. And uh, Dwight, so we are clear, you join them and win a championship. You'll be joining a growing list of players who have never won a championship in my personal record book. Poor DeAndre Ayton still has to live so close to Sean Miller. The Knicks <laughs> believe they got a steal with their second round pick. Mitchell Robinson. Here's what I believe. If any other team drafted him, they would have gotten a steal. The Knicks got someone who will be out of the league in two years. By the way, what team doesn't believe they got a steal with their second round pick? Hanley Ramirez. What could have been? Hanley Ramirez. What could lie ahead? Hanley Ramirez. Possibly three squares per day collision course. Sean Miller had the number one pick in the draft and lost to Buffalo. Pinehurst number two. Beautiful. Amazing. Not intimidating. Right up until you get on or around the greens. Then it tortures you like no other golf course I've ever played. Ronald Darby, your loyalties to Jameis Winston knows no boundaries. Ronald Darby, prison cell, late at night. Asking himself if lying for Jameis Winston was worth it. Collision course. You ever watch paint dry? If so, no need to watch baseball. Panama qualified for the World Cup. But don't worry, soccer is growing in the U.S. (laughs) Panama wildly celebrating a goal after going down. Six nothing. Disgrace. Act like you've been there before. Even though... You've never been there before. You don't hear a lot about him, but I think the best soccer player in the world right now might be James Rodriguez. Oh. What happened there? He struggles with Rodriguez. What happened there? It's Hamas. It's James to me. Hamas. Well, it's spelled James. All right, Hamas Rodriguez. You can just call him Hamas. How about JR? Okay. Lawrence Taylor. Saying Jameis Winston should know better. Lawrence, the Stugatz, is strong in you. LT, for the love of everything that is holy, let Dwayne Casey win NBA Coach of the Year tonight and let him accept that award wearing a Pistons hat. We are about two weeks away from finding out which NBA team will lose next year's NBA Finals to the Golden State Warriors. You know what Francisco Lindor spent the weekend doing, Dan? Yard work. Josh Rosen said Sam... You didn't even wait for me to... You want to do that with me waiting? It was perfect. I I actually timed it up perfectly. It was very good. There was no dead air, no spaces, nothing. You answered, I answered. It was like we were making music there, man. Oh, we can try it again if you want. You know what Francisco Lindor spent the weekend doing, Dan? What? Yard work. (laughs) Josh Rosen said Sam Bradford is helping him out a ton. Hopefully, Josh passed the famous course, Bradford 101, where quarterbacks learn how to get injured, never live up to expectations, and end up holding a clipboard and teaching guys like Josh Rosen how to play the position. Anyone check in on Paul Casey today? Yesterday, he spent the entire day choking. Indians, D-backs, World Series, collision course. Here I am! Rock you like a Harry Kane. 
the 76ers <laughs> saying they are not shopping Markel Fultz <laughs> when hell? credible reports say they are shopping him. Sixers, the Stugats, is strong in you. Jim Nance called Bubba Watson an artistic genius. Jesus, Jim, he's a golfer. Bubba Watson won the Travelers Championship for the third time with just some incredible shot making. Man is like a Picasso with a golf club. Edwin Jackson signed with his 13th team. No. Man, that's a lot of cups of coffee. Carmelo Anthony opting in. Heady play. Carmelo Anthony, you've done an amazing job of not looking too defensive. Chiefs offensive lineman, Laurent Daverney Tardif, an actual doctor, can't wear an MD on the back of his jersey. Man balanced football while becoming a doctor, studying in the offseason for eight bleeping years. Laurent, instead of wearing MD on the back of your jersey, you should wear an FU. By the way, Doc, since you're a doctor now, you might want to tell your coach to lay off the donuts and the Waffle House. Oh. What happened there? Ruben, oh. Ruben, Loftus Cheek, Chelsea first team, collision course. What happened? You're upset with the Andy Reid stuff? I don't understand. He's a doctor now. He can help his coach out. Should be a good guy. Why are you upset by that? I'm upset. Well, he's Just... a doctor now. Love this ridiculous time of year. We think OKC has a leg up. When it comes to re-signing Paul George, because his mom had a surprise party for him and invited Billy Donovan. LeBron ate a Garcia seafood in Miami on Saturday. That's right. He's back. That's right, baby. LeBron to Miami is official. Let it ring out throughout all ESPN's echo chamber. Yeah. Que no vale la fiesta, no the party. He was hey, hugging hey, old hey, women, hey, old Cuban hey, women no at Garcia's Seafood. No the party. <laughs> Is it Donkic on this? Luke Donkic won't play in the summer league. Donkic. Because he's too busy. And it's Luca. Catching up on season seven of Friends. The A's have homered. In a major league record, 25 straight home games. So, for the A's, every ballpark is a home away from home. A kangaroo played in the World Cup. The United States did not. I thought we took that out. He has the yips. Was the first public comments from the new trainer of Markel Fultz. Joey Gallo update. Batting 192 with 18 homers. Joey Gallo update. 266 at bats, 111 strikeouts. Joey Gallo, sometimes all or usually nothing. (laughs) Cody Bellinger, sophomore slump. Dodgers, seven homers, eight runs. Baseball, the Mets are seven and 25 over the last 32. I hate them. The Jets claim they have three quarterbacks, which means they don't have one. I hate them more. To the guy, On a small Delta plane from North Carolina to New York who decided it was a good time to chat up the lady next to him about AI, VR, and how the robots will eventually take over. Do me a favor. You and your robots, go to hell. And when you get there, make sure you say hello to Art Bryles. Dan, those are the weekend observations. Aggressive. I this guy. He's definitely trying to get a date out of it. More money, more problems. He went, I'm going to tell you, it was an hour and 20 minutes on AR, VR, and the robots are going to take over. And when he started with AI, I was in, I was figuring Alan Iverson, I'll join the conversation. But then he went to virtual reality and robots are taking over the world. And I was okay. done. All right. We'll I get, blasted him right on the plane. All right. We'll get back to that in a second. Annoying. Uh, Small you, crap. I'll, t- I'll tell you what's annoying. I mean, what you did with Hamas and Lucas. What about right? Did you Luca? get a... Luca, <laughs> fine. I mean, it's a fine. I wasn't going to say it. It's a fine. It's really ten dollars because Mike just corrected me on it. Therefore, it should be fresh in your mind right now. I, mean, I haven't Did heard you his call name. Call him the Lucas. I call him Luke. He called him Luke Don Tunkic or something like that. Donkic, <laughs> well, like Donkic. 
Don Lebatard. Some people might think that I love you are the three best words together. For me, that's not what the three best words together are. Stugats. The three best words together are Stugats just making a point and going, how's that sound? <laughs> or a derivative, how about that? Yeah, that's my like, favorite. Here, you can eat some of this. How about that? How's that sound? <laughs> It's I I don't think there are three better words in the language. I didn't think you guys noticed, man. It's incredible. We've been watching Glad you. you like it. How about that? This is the Don Levatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. There are some sports stories today that I legitimately have wanted to talk about, and we keep getting derailed. What Bruce Bowen has said about Kawhi Leonard, I want to talk about. I want to talk about Kawhi Leonard. The idea of them trading him only to the East. Why are they doing that? Is it to placate? Kawhi Leonard, why are you doing that? Is, is it because Kawhi would be in control of the situation and would prefer to be out east? I think it's a leverage Or to punish him because he wants to be out west. He wants to go to the Lakers and not allowing. It. I think it's a leverage play for San Antonio. It's, hey, we're only going to trade him to the east, which forces the Western Conference teams to really kind of, you know, give more than they would normally give in an effort to try to get Kawhi Leonard. But if he says he's going to the Lakers in a year, what's the point? Right, it, it's clear what they want to do by only sending him ease. They don't want to have to deal with him in their own conference because they're going to try to rebuild and compete in that conference. However, Kawhi does have a certain bit of leverage here too by saying, "I'll, I'll re up with any team that trades for me," and he can say, "No, I'm, I'm not well, signing that's that the extension." Thing. That's where the players have the power. So I wanted to get into that. I want to get into Mello. I want to get into this Hanley Ramirez story, which sounds crazy. I wanted to get into Edelman and the idea that Edelman is vigorously defending himself on this, but nobody believes anything a vigorous defender has to say anymore on this subject. They're literally, even if you've been wronged, if you've been wronged, if you could be in a situation where you get four games and it's a total mistake, total innocent, right? no one will believe that. 100%. No one's going to believe you. I think we stopped believing people at Ryan Braun. Is that where we stopped? What I believe was, so. What was the tipping point on when we stopped? But I also wanted to get into what Stugatz was saying, which is that baseball, the seven homers that produces eight runs, like what you've seen happen in the modern age with advanced stimuli, with basketball and baseball, is baseball has evolved that way. The pitchers are so precise. You're not facing an arm three times to a lineup. Everyone's coming out of the bullpen throwing 100 miles an hour, and every guy who's in the batter's box has realized, oh, wait, a single isn't valuable the way a home run is. And so the game has evolved that way, and it's the worst way because it's too slow. Look at how basketball has evolved. Look how much more fun it is. Right. Like it's they, Baseball is in a precarious place because the players have gotten too good. They've gotten too good, and it becomes hard to watch in 2018 when you want technology. When you want, But the problem with all of these conversations that I can't have is Stugatz is blurting throughout – these conversations, Dan, I watched Creed 2 three times on the airplane on my way to Pinehurst. The trailer. I watched the trailer three times, Dan. I mean, Mike sent it to us in a group text, and, you know, it was a quick flight up to North Carolina to play Pinehurst number two. I watched it three times. I mean, and you learn something new every time. I don't remember a thing from it other than the homage to Muhammad Ali where he's working out under shadow boxing underwater in a pool. I paused it there once, but it is, I'm telling you, man, Few trailers have given me more goosebumps than this one. Well, but Guillermo's not Three with times. us. Guillermo's not with us on some of this stuff. Guillermo just saw Predator for the first time this weekend because we heard, he heard us talking about it. And evidently the director of Predator is going to join us here at some point this week. The dude, the director of Predator made in a four year span, Predator, Die Hard, Hunt for Red October. Man. And then vanished for 14 years. I think you can after you make those, right? No, he vanished because he was in jail. Oh. Like, it's a crazy story. It's nuts. I thought he made so much money, he but just decided, no, hey, I'm done of, here. Th no, but he's also a bleep Hollywood What's guy. What's he in jail for, being awesome? No, there was... <laughs> put it, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is the director, was the director of Predator in jail for being awesome? Yeah, it was, it was way too awesome. But Guillermo didn't like the movie, evidently. He's making fun of us. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. What I said was... I felt left out, so I decided yesterday to watch Predator, and I will no longer let you poo-poo the Fast and Furious movies, because this movie is just as ridiculous as all of those. 
They were fighting an invisible yeah, alien yeah, in had, the jungle. But it had two United States governors in it. But wait a second. It's his. This it, is his Fast and Furious. This is our Fast and exactly. Furious. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I'm in on it now. Wait, but Vin Diesel's not going to become oh, a governor. Oh, you don't know. The Rock could be president. I mean, that's better. One oh, president right is better that. than two oh, governors. You're right Come on. About that. Yeah. But The Rock came late to the Fast and Furious, and The Rock is attaching his name to everything now. The, the Rock, how does The Rock, The Rock is making movies so fast that you don't even remember the bust says they bust because his next one's coming out, and he's hanging from a skyscraper. Like, hey, that was Baywatch. It's in the theaters for one minute. Was The Rock involved with it? Whoosh, I don't know. He's on a skyscraper and flying in a train to the sky. What was that Rampage movie? Who cares? On to the next one. I'm I mean, jumping. Look at me. I have one leg, and I'm jumping from building to building. how is that possible? Nobody's allowed to, to cash in like we, you will turn on kevin hart the moment he puts his face on underwear how is it possible that the rock is immune to this his days seem to have 48 hours and his years seem to be 500 days long because i don't know how this guy has time to do any of this stuff that he does how <laughs> someone explain it to me <laughs> he's got five movies coming out in the next six months <laughs> you're not like you don't even have time to notice that they're gonna bomb like it just all of it goes by way too fast. Do they even do reshoots, or does he like just go in front of a green screen? He does a thing for like fifteen minutes, and it's on to the next movie. San Andreas Two has been announced, Mike. It's been announced. San and, Andreas and they're 2. just blockbusters. Wait a minute! Didn't San Andreas One end with the whole city being destroyed? Yes, they've rebuilt the city in this time. Yep, Mike. One of the great things you've heard me Another tell city. this story. Uh, Matt Damon got out of the Bourne movies because Hollywood needed the money so bad that Matt Damon was just going to the set and just running around. And there was no script. They were writing the script as he just ran around. He's like, I don't want to do it this way. I don't even know what we're doing. And so he, like, gets out of the Bourne movies. Uh, there is the possibility that Dwayne Johnson is doing uh, one of these Rampage movies but is delivering lines accidentally from Baywatch. We told you that, Matt Damon story. Matt Damon? That's right. <laughs> Don Libertard. Matt Damon used to be a part of my life. And I came on here and I told a story that happened at Matt Damon's house. And I haven't heard from Matt Damon since. And I don't blame him. Stugatz. Matt Damon values his privacy. And so if I'm telling a story of watching a game, a football game at Matt Damon's house, and Bruce Willis is calling, yelling because the Patriots are scoring and ruining his bet, I've betrayed a confidence. You'd see a nice little opening that he took to retell the entire Matt Damon story. Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis, mm -hmm. too. It became a Bruce Willis, I am Matt Damon story. Mm -hmm. Can't even imagine how much Willis had on that game. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented oh, by Progressive Insurance. Oh, oh Mike, what? Mike, go get all the sounds that uh, are Stugats. No, that wasn't that. That was really bad. Was it? But I I don't get fined for that, right? You had a talking. rough week. You had a rough weekend with. I've had a rough Wingo. couple of weeks, but I've been yelling at referees and opposing lacrosse teams, and then I was yelling at Wingo, and I was yelling at Goalie because I'm not certain they were playing by the rules in Pinehurst number two. Like, so I've just been yelling a lot, man. I'm sorry. You know what? I hadn't really noticed for a while. Your phlegm had gone away. Yes, it, it came back today. Well, I think resurfaced. no, but I think it's because of the weekend he had. I think he I got into the one. yeah. I think he got into Pinehurst. He got into the. The drink a little bit. He got into the cigs, as he likes to call them. The heaters. It's, um, you know, it's funny because I'm walking around Pinehurst and like everyone's got a camera in my face and they're asking me to yell something. <laughs> Every hole is yell Murray, yell this, yell that. Uh, what do you want me to do? I'm playing golf. Um, heaters. Is that a New York thing? Calling, uh, calling cigarettes heaters. <laughs> Where does that come from? I don't know. Now, calling them heaters is one of the jerkiest things I've ever heard. <laughs> so jerky. <laughs> You managed to call them. Which is worse, Guillermo? But which makes you more of a jerk, cigs or heaters? I'm with Lewis on this. Oh, oh, man. oh man, that's the first fine in the fine system. I'm with Lewis on this. We had to fine you because your partying right. ways were getting away from you, and it was clogging up your entire immune system. I'm with Lewis on this, oh, and now you're back because of Hal and uh, and Golick. I'm with Lewis on this. <laughs> Here's your sports center update. The LA Kings and Ilya Kovalchuk have agreed to a three year contract. Mike's very excited about this. The owners of the Chicago Cubs. He was a dynamic goal scorer when he was in the NHL. Disappeared for 10 years. He's back, baby. How old is he? He's got to be Ovechkin. Well, close to Ovechkin's age. Is he gel? Is he coming back because Ovechkin did all that? He wants the party that Ovechkin had. Who doesn't? Exactly. Keith Richards wants that party. The owners of the Cubs are interested in taking over Syria cl uh, soccer club AC Milan. Syria, Syri just Syri uh, you told me to say Syria. I did. Out. Like when you get to the A in Syria, just oh, come on, drag it out. Syria, 
All right. The Cubs are interested in taking over Syria. Just call it Calcio. All right. AC Milan. And finally, Sweden pays high school students $120 per month to attend school. Really? <laughs> Amazing. You know which school I would have went to if someone paid me? I mean, how about you? Oh, you went to school. Sucker. With GNC Auto Deliver and Save, don't worry about missing a daily dose of your favorite products. Set up your free subscription and enjoy free shipping and 10% off the order. Quality ship, wellness delivered. Visit GNC.com or a store near you to learn more. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Let's just say hypothetically that uh, Julian Edelman is 100% innocent. What is, <laughs> no, no, let's just, let's just for the sake of this argument, okay. let's just I'm say sorry, sorry. It, it's so. It's, I'm giving you a fact. He is 100% innocent and he has been wrong. Is there any sentence, any detail, anything that he could say that would make you believe him? Anything? No. If the appeal gets dropped, would you believe him? If the uh, if if on appeal he wins, rather, if on appeal he wins, and the NFL says, "Never mind, we got it wrong." That one does that one work for you? Um, does the NFL have to come out and say it? Which I don't think they will with drug policy stuff because of the privacy stuff. Man, I'd still think they're up to something. Um, or there's a reason or just because it's the Patriots? Just because it's football. I mean, he Edelman is tiny and playing that sport the way that he plays it, because he doesn't know he's hard to tackle. He plays physically. And that sport has wrecked Wes Welker. That right. sport has wrecked Brett Favre in a way Brett Favre saying he wants to abolish youth football because Brett, Brett Favre looks like our grandfather. Brett Favre, the, the, do you know how damning it is for Brett Favre face for that youth, that team, that sports vitality? The guy who was more durable than anybody is telling you, oh, you got to abolish youth football. Right. <laughs> he's getting paid for that, right? I mean, getting paid to lobby. I believe he's, I believe he's getting against paid. youth yes. football. Yes. I don't know that to be so. I don't, maybe it's so. <laughs> no, I think he's getting paid to wear copper fit after playing football. Uh, like, I feel like amazing now. I, listen, I'll apologize to Brett if I'm wrong here, but I don't think I am. I believe okay. there's some sort of endorsement here where he's getting paid to be anti-youth football. I mean, it's the guys are strong in him if it's true, but let's find out. <laughs> All right, okay? well, that would so be good. So who's paying him, baseball? It would be good <laughs> It would be good to find out if it's true, <laughs> Stugatz, before you say it live on the radio. I said maybe, and I said I will apologize no, if it's not maybe. true no, to the great number four. No, you didn't say maybe. You came right in strong. I said I saying, believe. You softened it to that after you came in very strong with your cynical, he's being paid to abolish youth football. You came in and you stated that as a fact. You did not quit your lying, quit your backpedaling, quit your softening. Moreover, he had an opinion and you immediately accused him only having that opinion because he was getting paid to have that opinion. That's right. That's the other so thing. so unfair of you That's to do. like super reckless, super awful. Let's hope uh, I'm right. Okay. Uh, well, but how could you possibly be right? Who would be paying him to abolish youth football? A lobbyist group? I'm looking into okay, it. Okay, very good. I'm sure we'll get an answer never. I'm getting close. Hold okay, on. yeah, I'm sure. You're getting close and I'm sure the show will die uh, death before it ever gets answered. Regardless. Almost there. I mean, it's unbelievable what you're doing. I'm like with the dog with the bone what are you phone. doing? What's the matter with you? I'm trying to get some answers for you. I'm like a dog with a bone on this one, man. Almost there. Yeah, I, was I think I was wrong. Possibly, Possibly wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I think. All right, so I'm good. We I'm good with walking that back. We have walked it back. Uh, thank you, Stugatz, for all your work here, all your professional work. I'm sorry, I was confused. It's actually Levi Jeans, or maybe Wrangler. That copper stuff that he does though really works. It's great. Remember the uh, razor he had working there for a while too. That razor. Why yeah. are you so irresponsible? Well, I'm not certain I'm wrong on this one, man. I'm, you just said you were wrong. I know, but. Confession, my lower back was hurting at a music festival and I started to diet because of how I looked in the copper fit lower back pad. It just pushed everything else up. I was like, whoa. It's a Faja. 
I need a change. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fa. That is just Guillermo saying in Spanish to the four people who understand that word in our audience that that's a girdle. He, my, Guillermo just accused you in Spanish for some reason of wearing a girdle, Mike. It was very girdle-like. The lo- the waist area was fine and that it could get into tighter wait, wait, pants. Guillermo, what are you doing with the chimed in, that's a faja? That's well, a faja, that's what it is. I know it's what it is, but why did you contribute that to the conversation? Because it's funny. Faja's a funny word. It just pushed everything else up <laughs> and over. Pepperoni nipples? Everything was working then. It was a, it was a jarring time. I, I did, we were leaving. And my wife says, "Why aren't you wearing the thing?" And I screamed at her because I don't like myself. <laughs> why aren't you wearing the thing? Yeah, why aren't you making? The, why aren't you wearing the thing that makes your back feel better? Because I don't like myself. Wow. <laughs> Didn't give me instant relief, but tons of emotional damage. So you take the good with the bad. That's right. That's right. Physical relief, emotional suffering. We're going to update the polls next. More money, more problems. If you happen to lose your Capital One card, do not worry. Do not fret. Who frets anymore? Do people still fret? Put it on the poll, Guillermo. People still fret? Who uses the word fret? Roy, you're a young person. Fret? Guillermo, put it on the poll. Do young people use the term fret? Before I wasn't paid for this. Do not fret if you have lost your Capital One card because Capital One and Capital One's apps will help you out. Tell them, Stu Guy. Fret Favre. With Capital One, you can instantly lock your credit or debit card on the Capital One app in case you've lost or misplaced your card. Fret Favre. That's a thing you just did right now. Fret Favre. I'm going to go have a heater, man. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And you can watch on ESPN News.